Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we're going to find the change in the period of a pendulum by changing the length of the pendulum by just a little bit. So here we have a pendulum which is oscillating back and forth. It has some original length L and an associated period. We know that the angular frequency of oscillation is going to be equal to 2 pi f and the angular frequency of a pendulum is equal to the square root of the gravitational constant, or I should say the acceleration due to gravity, divided by the length of the pendulum. And so if we then calculate the frequency of the oscillation, it would be 1 over 2 pi times the square root of g over l. And since the period is the inverse of the frequency, the period of the pendulum is equal to 2 pi times the square root of l over g. Now g, of course, will be a constant, that's the acceleration of gravity uh, at a particular location on the Earth, and l is the only variable, it will be the length of the pendulum to the center of mass of that pendulum. And I've already calculated that when the length is equal to 1 meter, the period will be 2.007 seconds. So when l is just 1 centimeter more, 1% greater than before, how will that affect the period? how big will the period be? So we have to find the change in the period and then we can calculate the new period. To do that, we're going to start with the change in the period with respect to the length. So let's rewrite this equation. We can say that this is equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of g times l to the 1 half power. L is our variable here. So now we can find the change in the period with respect to the length. So it's simply the derivative of this. So we take our constant, 2 pi divided by the square root of g, and then we take the derivative of this, which is 1 half l to the minus 1 half power. The 2's cancel out here, so this gives us pi divided by the square root of g times 1 over l to the 1 half power. So, if we want to find the change in the period, we take our dl to the other side, and we can write that the change in the period is equal to pi divided by the square root of g times 1 over l to the 1 half power times dl, simply by moving our differential over the other side, and now using the derivative, we find the relationship between the change in the period and the change in l. Assuming that we know what L is, and in this case we know L is 1 meter. So let's go ahead and plug the, the values in and see what we get. So here we're going to find the change in the period when L is equal to 1 meter and the change in L, the dL, is equal to 0 0.01 meter. So that's what we're trying to find. And so that is going to be equal to, plug in, we have the... Uh, pi divided by the square root of g, which is 9.8 in most places, times 1 over, that would be 1 to the 1 half power, which is still going to be equal to 1, and times dl, which is going to be 0.01. So notice that this is equal to 1, so this would be equal to 0.01 pi divided by the square root of g. At this point, I'm going to resort to a calculator. So we have the number pi, and times 0 0.01 and divide by 9.8, take the square root of that, equals, and we end up with a change in the period of 0 0.0100, 0 0.0100. So one one hundred of a second, so the period will increase by one one hundred of a second. So the new period, the new t, is going to be equal to the original t plus the change in the t. So the change here is the differential, it's how much the period is changing. So this is equal to 2.007 seconds plus 0 0.01 second. Notice that this is going to be 2.017 seconds. So that's going to be the new period of our pendulum by extending the pendulum by one centimeter. Well, it turns out that most pendulums back in the old days when we still have clocks that were driven by pendulums, we had a little mechanism in there that we could change a little screw and we could lower and raise the center of mass of the pendulum by just a little bit. And by doing so, we were effectively changing the length of the pendulum. And from that, we're actually changing the period. So when your clock ran a little slow, you want to run a little faster, you would raise up the center mass and the 
the period would go a little faster. If the clock was going a little too fast, you would lower the center mass and make the pendulum go a little slower. So you could adjust the pendulum so that the clock wouldn't run too fast or too slow, or at least not too much, because with changing temperatures and changing conditions, the length of the pendulum was always changing between winter and summer, and so we always had to adjust the pendulums. And yes, I'm old enough to remember how to do that. And that's how it's done.